with different software to get anything online. I love when the computer updates, but the software doesn't, and the, or the software updates, and the computer hasn't, and they crisscross, and it happens, and here I am. You're watching Hal Sparks Mega Worldwide if you hung in there, and I appreciate it, and I want to say that, and thank you. And if you're here, uh, and I'm, it moved me in any of the other ways that it often moves me. Um, <laughs> tell, tell people on the other on YouTube to jump to another stream if it indeed did jump streams. I hope not. Are we back? We're good. And the audio is in time, and I'm in focus. Which is, I mean, more than you could ask for, quite frankly. I, I, feel, uh, I feel in some ways uh, <laughs> denied by this. And it has to be a slightly uh, shorter show, and I do mean uh, very slight, uh, because I have to be at load-in at 6 o'clock at the Whiskey, which is a good 40 minutes away. So there you go. Uh, all right. Excellent. Audio's perfect. Looking great. Fantastic. Here we go. Look out. Craziness. And, you know... It was one of those situations we miss you, Hal. I know it's a giant Hal roaming about is uh, something we all miss and we all hold dear. Um, where's my channels? Here we go. And close this. There we go. I just need to know which thing I'm going to go to because I got to go to me. And then all I need is this one. Hold on. Three, two, one. This guy right here. Yeah, there you go. Good old fuck nut Carlson. La ladies and gentlemen. I, I have to say, we're, what, why wouldn't we all be just tremendously excited at the prospect? Look how big that sub goal is, and look how miserably low it's gotten. Uh, no pressure. I'm just saying, <laughs> I haven't earned the subs right now. After the technological issues I've had, don't do it. Don't. I mean, I'm even. I'm hiding the subscription. Don't do it. Just don't. I don't deserve it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> And he was so young and beautiful. Um, let's uh, let's just, in the short time that we have together, um, enjoy a wee bit of um, the most confused man on the internet. You know, Greg Kelly is the most miserable person on the internet. Uh, Tucker Carlson is the most confused person. Literally, uh, his entire career, besides the fact it was based on the he was you know born with a silver spoon in all orifices. Uh, is based on the idea that he has a forehead butt crack that he has managed to monetize. Don't let anybody tell you that your weird physical aspects of your face can't be turned into a cottage industry. I'm, I'm surprised there aren't like big flesh-colored shirts with a giant forehead crease right in the middle of this. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Peter I, don't, Navarro I don't feel welcome. I'm just saying for the record. Is the picture of a law-abiding American citizen. No, he's not really the picture of a law-abiding American citizen. He actually is the picture of a uh, an an old coot in the woods who uh, is accused of murder, and some people think he's innocent, so they bought him a suit, shaved him, and cut his hair to make him look fancy in front of a judge. A 72-year-old retired business school professor. He's got yeah, that's how I would describe him. Not a member of the last administration who was integral to the attack on the Capitol. He's 72. That's That outweighs what he's done, Bill Cosby. That If you're that age, Harvey Weinstein, then at some point... PhD in economics from Harvard University. Oh, okay. Well, you had you, you had me on his side until then. But now that I find out he went to the... He got the same business education that Ted Cruz got, I know he's equally as stupid. Whoops. His most recent job was extremely white collar. He served at the as the White House trade advisor in the last presidential. Extremely white collar. You mean he did no work whatsoever? Is that what you're saying? This is like third tier white collar. You get you shit diplomas while you do it. Administration. It, it you do the entire job with your pinky up. Wonderful. Oh, oh, pardon me, Mata. While I go into the drawing room and play the grand piano famous for his tough and by the way uh you you're, you're you're right to think that when he said white while he was saying white collar he clearly chubbed dance on china he's never been charged with a crime he's never trafficked fentanyl for example from mexico in fact his hobby is yoga uh, which is of course an attempt by satan to normalize heathen religions and destroy the christianity that our founding fathers uh put in the first place so i would dis i disagree Thank you. Yoga, bigger crime than trafficking fentanyl in your rectum 
uh, without wrapping it in plastic first. Um, resting Tucker face. Huh? Um, <laughs> also, um, <clears throat> the idea is, and this is, I guess, the premise of our of, of our school project today that young Tucker is giving us, is that anything shy of trafficking fentanyl, not a crime. Also, he was indicted for it, and and subpoenaed, and he avoided the subpoena. So he's they went past the whole charge with the crime thing. He was indicted. That's the same thing. Riding his bicycle, and oh, yoga and riding his bicycle nude with the seat off. I guess you know what? This is getting filthier by the second. Short Peter Navarro does not seem like a criminal. Much did he just say Nazi or was that me? A danger to this nation, and yet last Friday. Federal agents arrested Peter Navarro at yeah um, while he was trying to get on an airplane. Egan National Airport. In Weird that somebody avoiding a subpoena gets arrested at an airport. Washington. Oh, uh, and and in and in the jurisdiction where he's being charged, no less. They did not call his lawyer, as is customary in cases. He doesn't have a lawyer. He's representing himself. This. They didn't even come to his house, which as it happened... He wasn't at his house. He was at the fucking airport. <laughs> just feet from the FBI building. They could have walked, but they didn't. No, they had to drive because he was at the airport. He's fleeing the scene. Oh, goodness, he's fleeing. He was going to go out and do an inventory of the darn cars. Instead, they took down Peter Navarro in public. They took him down. As you would a fugitive terror mastermind. So... Really? They they put a black hood over his head and made him stand on a upside down painter's bucket while they hooked up electronic uh, electrodes to his gonads. Oh no! They they walked up to him at the fucking Southwest Terminal and said, uh, you, "You come with us, please." And he said, "Okay." You mean like that? It's interesting that terrorist masterminds go go so willingly, and only moments later, can, after showing up, which is all they were asked to do are released to stand out on the fucking sidewalk and complain about the due process they were just given. Everyone could see it and learn the lesson they were sending. Sorry, where, 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 oh, where everyone could see it, I see. I thought he was a terror mastermind. So everyone could see it and learn the lesson they were sent. Well, technically only, uh, only people who fly uh, United uh, Economy Plus. I don't know what airline he was on. They handcuffed Peter Navarro, they put him in leg irons, and then they threw them, him in a cell. Well, no, they don't do it necessarily in that order. They And they didn't throw him in the cell, for the record. You don't get you don't get thrown in a cell anymore. I mean, uh, the last time that happened was, I think, on the set of Blazing Saddles. He's now facing years in prison. Uh, why is he facing years in prison when all he had to do was honor a subpoena? So what did Peter Navarro do to deserve treatment like this? Well, he resisted a subpoena from the January 6th committee. Okay. Why, why would he do that? Why, would, why wouldn't he want to tell his side of the story to the January 6th committee? Put him in their place. Let him know that he, he was there. He knows how it went down. You, everything was above board. The president has nothing to hide. He was with him the whole time. He knows everything. It's in his book. He's told it to, uh, oh shit, he's actually spilled the beans. So there goes like executive privilege. The January 6th committee is Washington's latest partisan inquisition. It's run by Nancy Pelosi with help from obedient little quizlings like Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Quizlings? That's a, uh, that's a favorite word of Glenn Beck recently. Um, apparently, they all have a like. They all have the same uh, add to your vocabulary calendar. Navarro resisted that subpoena because he had nothing to do with January sixth. Uh, well, then why didn't he just show up and say, "I had nothing to do with January sixth"? Why would Why wouldn't that occur to you? <laughs> you 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 didn't uh, you didn't think to maybe that would have. And they wouldn't have taken that as an answer? Is it maybe that they had copies of your texts and they knew you had something to do with it? Nothing whatsoever. That's nothing. I mean, he wasn't even in the administration. He barely knows Donald Trump. Trump is a Democrat who used to get Peter Navarro coffee. Not disputed. Peter Navarro did not break into the Capitol. He didn't encourage. 
anyone else to break into the Capitol. He well, that's the part that remains to be seen. But also, uh, he was coordinating with the people who did, and so he was a material witness to any crime that may have happened. And you don't get uh, subpoenaed by the committee just because you committed a crime. It, you might have material knowledge of a crime that was committed, or you might have already been mentioned in or seen to be in text chains, email chains related to this. He wasn't even there that day. He had no idea it was going to happen again. <laughs> yes, he was He was in. Peter Navarro wasn't even in the White House that day. He wasn't in the Capitol. He was in the basement freeing the children from the adrenochrome chambers. That's beyond dispute, and Nancy Pelosi and Liz Cheney know that. Well, then what, why didn't he show up and just tell them that? What? How? What is that, four fucking sentences? The FBI is, he could walk to the FBI. If you really wanted to figure out what happened on January 6th, Peter Navarro would be the last person you would talk to. Um, n no, no, no. I, I think the last person you would talk to would probably be, um, I, I'm sure somewhere in the world there's an indigenous tribe that has made no contact with the Western world. Um, or uh, perhaps that you could talk to that Japanese soldier who thought the war was still going on and hid in the woods for decades. <laughs> Instead, you'd be. There's a long list of people before you get the last person to talk to. And none of the people who are the last people you're talking to worked in the administration of the very admin of the group that caused all this shit. Talking to Ray Epps and various FBI informants. Uh, Ray Epps wasn't an FBI informant. This has already uh, been sold. But also, uh, Ray Epps is a conservative. Uh, he was on the ground. See, he was. Somebody was coordinating. It's like saying, why would you even talk to the generals? They weren't anywhere near the battlefield. Why don't you talk to the soldiers? But finding out... By the way, uh, invert that with what Tucker Carlson and his ilk were saying about the soldiers at Abu Ghraib um, carrying out orders. Like, they were just doing what they were told. It's the guys upstairs that you gotta go after. It happened on January 6th, and hey, why MS is not the point of the exercise? The point of the exercise is preventing Donald Trump from running for president again. No, 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 that's, uh, that's the point of his medication regimen and his lack of exercise and his um, his pile of fish delights. Oh yeah, now we gotta go back to the other page. Good Lord. I always have to jump over to this one uh, before they uh, like, cause it'll only let me do a little piece of this. There we go, hold on. There we go. I just need to, uh, um, it only lets, the Ecamm only lets me do a certain amount of the video before it makes me r reset. And what? By the way, you're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Is not the point of the exercise. The point of the exercise is Ms. preventing May the yeah, fear. boss, President Donaldson vote. Right, as you control it. the White House and both houses of Congress does not mean you get to throw your political opponents behind bars. Well, no, it, it doesn't actually. Uh, you, you can subpoena them though. Though the throwing them behind bars part and again, he wasn't thrown. He was he was uh, gently cradled, for the record. Um, that's not what we do in him. Oh, sorry, the sub goal got gigantic that's what again. They do in it Haiti. resets every time. Hold on, uh, this will save us. If I if I do say so, my darn self. But that's what we're doing now. And Peter Navarro is not the first. Biden's Justice Department also arrested former Trump advisor Steve Bannon for a similar fake crime. A fake crime. So just so you know, if you avoid a subpoena to Congress, that is a fake crime. Honoring a subpoena from the Congress of the United States of America uh, is is America last. Steve Bannon is awaiting trial this summer. Right. And he's free to bullshit on the airwaves all he wants and dig his own grave and talk shit about the January 6th committee because this is America. He's not a political prisoner. Notice how he walked free. As a matter of fact, this happened before uh, this happened to Navarro. It happened to Bannon. He went through the same process, and then he had what well, he surrendered. He went actually went down there. He went home and he was done. So what the fuck is what, up with Navarro? So this is not something we've seen before. It's a huge step toward the politics of the third world. The politics. It's a huge step towards the politics of the third world you know you know in all those areas you know where like in eritrea or in uh the, the congo like the dprk and uh the like north korea you know this they're they, they do that big thing where they allow you to dick around with a subpoena for months 
and then when you try to leave town without coming by and going hi i saw it i read it i'll be there um they and then you're released to go okay all right well we'll see you um it's i mean it's basically china at this point but the media whose job you thought it was to push back against power are not they're in fact applauding because it turns out no punishment is too severe for those who disagree with the national news media jesus christ they didn't string them up you bastard dramatic much for fuck's sake yeah all they did was yell lock her up about hillary clinton forever like but surreptitiously just throw her in jail and she's a you know a baby eater and she and huma abedin need to be you know they, they're set like the QAnons were like they're setting up gallows on the uh, the white house grounds for january 20th and all this bullshit meanwhile he had to he had to show up all he had to do was show up and go i got the subpoena i'll be there all right and and nothing happens they're not gonna he, they arrested him because he was trying to flee you pricks Jesus, this is so weak. Watch them gloat. What happened to Peter Navarro is what should have happened to Peter Navarro. He was indicted. And when you're indicted, you're arrested. What Peter Navarro did, it was so far out of bounds. It's, it's weird that uh, Tucker's picking mostly black people talking about this. As if it's, as Peter Navarro being in the sort of Mike Pence uh, uh, pigment spectrum. <laughs> This is some sort of. Does anybody notice there's like two, the two right out of the top? So oh, indefensible. This prosecution. Three, three black people. Oh my fucking god, Tucker, little uh, nail on the fucking head there, don't you think? He's got to squeak. Honestly, he's got to squeak out one white person. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because Peter Navarro is white collar. I see. It's really about they 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 want they want collar reparations. This is all just revenge. Punishing Navarro based on his blatant disrespect for the congressional subpoena. That was it. Yeah, three for three. Fuck a doodle. That's nuts. Yeah, Joy Reid is next. I'm surprised. He broke the law, and right, he he, he broke like he he ignored a congressional subpoena. They're gonna knock on your door, dipshit. That you don't understand. The blah, the blah, the blah, the blah. They're coming for us. The blah, the blah, cause the blacks are coming for us, and all they they just want to take down the whitest among us. So they really are your enemies. They're not. Uh, oh, they are. Who are they? The three black people you showed who were simply going, you got indicted. You should kind of show up. Yes, these, I mean, third world reference. Uh, you know, uh, this is obviously we're headed towards a banana republic idea. Then we show. Covering the news, they're plotting ways to hurt you. That's true. Oh, if they're not covering the news, they're plotting ways to hurt you. Are they now? Are they going to hurt me? Do you really want to hurt me? Do you really want to make Navarro cry? Congressional subpoenas are not optional. They lecture you. Co they lecture you. No, I'm not Peter Navarro, fucko. Comply with them or go to jail. That's the message. The lawyers... Co yes, comply with a congressional subpoena or go to jail. What the fuck are you talking about? You know what? You also don't have to... You can. You don't even have to comply with the subpoena. You could simply fucking answer it. Mark Meadows isn't getting arrested, and he didn't comply with the subpoena. His, but he had his lawyer write a letter saying, I don't believe this is true, and da-da-da-da-da. And so they have to find another way to fight him on it. Jesus Christ. Television are sending... So let's pretend for a moment that that was true, though it's in fact not true. All right, well, thanks for clarifying. They, so what are we pretending is true, uh, but is in fact not true? That they don't want to hurt me, or they, do you really want to hurt me? Do if there was in fact a law like that, for that law to be legitimate, it would have to be, like all laws, applied equally across the board. And no less than the Attorney General himself has said that again and again and again. I came to work here, he said, because we're committed to the rule of law and to seeking equal justice under the law. That was uh -huh. Merrick Garland in January. Quote, 
Are we gonna, are we gonna do Eric Holder? We conduct every investigation guided by the same norms. Now, those are the norms under which this country has lived for 250 years. It yeah, but Tucker's had it, and enough of it. Not justice. My bird is laughing at you, <laughs> Sparks. Well, good. Ha <laughs> ha. Unless it's applied equally to all adult American citizens, period. Anything less than that is by definition not justice. But we're getting much less than that. And it's very obvious. Here's just one example. 10 years ago this month, Congress voted overwhelmingly on a bipartisan vote, vote by the way, 17 Democrats, uh -huh. to hold Eric Holder, then the Attorney General, in criminal contempt of Congress. Right. Holder had refused to turn over documents showing how the Obama administration had armed the Mexican drug cartels. Oh, I, I, well, he, you know, it might be a problem that might be, he might have gotten free on a technicality on it because we didn't actually arm the, the Mexican drug cartels. They were doing a gun running sting. And in those cases, sometimes guns get bought and sold because the people who are you're trying to catch have to think you're really on their side. Jesus Christ. Uh, for all this back the blue bullshit, maybe they only back the blue because they they think every cop should be wearing a giant I'm a cop sign, especially if they're dealing with Mexican drug cartels and right wing like gun extremists. Remember that? Oh, yes. That's right. Fourth black person. This is the example. They're coming. The blah. <laughs> the blahs. Of the, the blah. They're coming for you. And they're not even. They've, there's two tiers of justice. The blahs. Want to make you. And then they're going to set the blahs free. One of the firearms they sent to Mexico under the so-called Fast and Furious program was then used to murder a U.S. Border Patrol officer. It was a scandal at the time. In case you don't recall. Watch. Mm -hmm. Border Patrol agent Brian Terry died in December 2010, killed by guns tied to an Obama administration. Tied to. Plan that armed Mexicans, a scandal officials tried to hide by wrongly claiming executive privilege. Emails contained in the House Oversight Committee's report show top officials knew the ATF sent guns to Mexico even before Terry's death. Even the Border Patrol. Yeah, but tied to, just because they did that thing doesn't mean the gun he was killed with came from there. And saying that there's a one-to-one -one is a lie. Sent Terry's team into the desert, didn't know about the operation. What difference would that have made? Do you think the do you think any of his team didn't think the Mexican cartels had fucking guns? Are you kidding me? So that was a legitimate scandal that implicated the entire US government, people who actually have power, not the retirees sitting in jail. Hold on by the way. One second. Uh holder. Subpoena. <clears throat> go us let's go july 3rd 2012 let's see the who here we go hold on may oh whoops wrong one hold on this is the here's politico from 2012 if i may um this is uh, okay um holder held in contempt <laughs> they hold they held holder holder got held the House has voted to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress over his failure to turn over documents related to the Fast and Furious scandal, the first time Congress has taken such a dramatic move uh, against a sitting cabinet official. The vote, 255 to 67, with 17 Democrats voting in support of a criminal contempt resolution. That's a interesting... What was the... Th the setting there, just 17 made up that 255? Holy shit. Uh, which authorized Republican leaders to seek criminal charges against Holder. The Democratic support came despite a round of behind-the-scenes lobbying by senior White House and justice officials, as well as pressure from party leaders to support Holder. Two Republicans, Steve uh, LaTourette and uh, Scott Reigel, uh, voted against the contempt resolution. Another civil contempt resolution giving the green light for the House Oversight and Committee to sue the Justice Department to get the Fast and Furious documents passed by 258 to 95 margin. Uh, 21 Democrats voted for the measure, but dozens of other Democrats marched off the floor in protest during the vote. That's why it was so lopsided. Adding even more drama to the tumultuous moment in the House chamber. The, uh, the ones that stayed were the negative votes, and then it was like, you know, yeah, it was a partisan vote. Okay, so uh, just across the street from the Capitol issued a landmark ruling against, uh, a ruling upholding most of uh, Barack Obama's health care law. 
The passions of the day were evident inside the Capitol, where Democrats accused Republicans of ginning up the contempt vote for political purposes, while Republicans continued to charge the Justice Department with a cover-up in the Fast and Furious scandal. The fight over the Holder contempt resolution also drew intense interest from outside groups, ranging from the NAACP to the National Riffle Association. Um, uh, the, sorry, that's the National Rape Apologists. Um, in a statement uh, released by his office, Holder blasted the contempt vote as politically motivated and misguided, and he singled out uh, Rep. Daryl Issa, chairman of the Oversight and Government Reform Committee and lead Republican on the Fast and Furious probe for special criticism. Today's vote is the regrettable culmination of what became a misguided and politically motivated investigation during the... Okay, this is his response. Holder had today's vote may make for good political theater in the minds of some, but it is, at base, both a crass effort and a, and a grave disservice to the American people they expect and deserve far better. Uh, they slammed it. However, speak Boner, 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 <laughs> in a brief interview with Politico, blamed Holder for the standoff. The idea that we're going to turn over some documents and whatever we turn over is uh, all you're going to get, and you have to guarantee you're never going to seek uh, contempt. No deal. Ba oh. In a brief interview with Politico, blamed Holder for the standoff. Bon Boner said the Justice Department wanted to turn over some Fast and Furious documents, but not all. If the House agreed to drop the contempt resolution, a deal that neither Boehner nor ISA was prepared to meet. The idea is that we're going to turn over some documents and whatever we turn over is all you're going to get. Uh, you're never going to see contempt. No deal. Boehner added that Holder never sought a personal meeting with him to resolve the fight despite sec uh, suggestion from some Obama administration officials that Holder uh, asked to do so. I said the House had to make such a move in order to get to the bottom of the Fast and Furious scandal. Um, I pointed out that uh, Nancy Pelosi backed a call for a contempt resolution against the uh, Bush White House over the firing of U.S. attorneys in 2008. Uh, the practical meeting of blah, 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 blah. Now, I don't take this matter lightly, frankly. Hold on, let's see. Boehner stressed that Holder and the Justice Department need to be held accountable for not providing sufficient... Uh, now, I don't take this matter lightly, frankly. I hoped it would never come to this. But no Justice Department is above the law, and no Justice Department is above the Constitution. Each of us is sworn to uphold. Uh, but the GOP-led move uh, infuriated other Democrats, especially minority lawmakers. Um, and then they had a, held a walkout of this. The Republicans didn't walk out of anywhere on this. Okay. Uh, Elijah Cummings, top Democrat in oversight, um, charged the Republicans uh, have been unfairly targeting Holder for months. Um, I want to see where he... Uh, so they, they basically did converse. They just didn't have a sit-down face-to-face um, so that it could look like Eric Holder had to come to Boehner's office and he could be filmed doing it. So he was like, we'll send you some. A certain executive privilege on some documents ISA is seeking shortly before the oversight and government voted on party lines to approve a contempt resolution against Holder. Despite a face-to-face -face session. Okay, so that's why they didn't have to seek that part of it. Um, and the contempt one is about documents to be turned over, not him in person showing up. Uh, let's see. Previous administration, including the Bush administration, refused to seek criminal charges against White House officials when a Democrat-run House passed a criminal contempt resolution over the firing of U.S. Attorney's Boehner's office, though, was expected to submit a criminal referral to the U.S. Attorney for the District of Columbia, uh, Ronald Manchin, in the next few days, uh, according to a Republican official. Um, this is the part right here. This right, That part right there. That would be the equivalent of what happened with the indictment of Peter Navarro. To my knowledge, that didn't happen. If anybody's aware... Uh, I'm I'm fairly certain that didn't happen. They never made the referral. They they you know they passed the resolution and then they yammered back and forth and then they had a hearing and that was that. But he sh they they were corresponding with them during this process. Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Tucker's stuck. Um, and is uh, stuck. Tucker f sucks. All right, let's see. There we go. Um. Let me go back to me real quick so I can fix that screen. Um, but I don't think they actually... Um, and, and the chat, you guys may know um, better than I, but I don't see um, a situation where um, they actually sent... Uh, you know, they, they sent a... You know, the, the congressional subpoena moved past after they did the contempt vote that it went to the DOJ and the DOJ, act, you know, or they asked for, uh, they submitted the criminal referral. Which is what would have led to the, you know, the his denial of this thing. So, hold on. Whoops. Where is this business? Where was my thing? All right, here we go. Um, there? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm, uh, retirees okay. sitting in jail. Hold on. Beep, beep, beep. 
now I'll go back to my screen and hopefully I, I can see you guys again in a second. Here we go. Arr. Because of what they did on January 6th. But people with actual power, and Eric Holder was at the very center of it, but Holder refused to comply with a subpoena from the Congress. Mm -hmm. Did the FBI arrest Eric Holder for that? Please. It was never even seriously considered. Holder asserted executive privilege, the right to have conversations hey, with the executive, the president, that are private. He cited the longstanding policy of respecting executive privilege, and he got away with it. So a week ago, Peter Navarro made this exact point. He sued the Justice Department, pushing back against this subpoena four days before he was arrested. And in that yeah. suit, Navarro cited policy written by yeah. the DOJ. One of the differences is, is that like Fast and Furious is an external program that they believed was a scandal. This was a direct attack on another part of the government. Office of Legal Counsel, that policy reads this way, quote, since the 1970s, this office has consistently advised that the president and his immediate advisors are absolutely immune from testimonial compulsion by congressional committee on matters related to their official duties. Yeah, uh, no one, it is no one, uh, president's official duty after they have lost an election to try to seize power through violent means and stop the peaceful transfer of power. There is no, uh, we, we don't have an insurrection czar, fucko. End quote. In other words, if somebody asserts executive privilege, at the very least, Congress doesn't get to arrest them. <laughs> no, they've already been denied that. Uh, everybody else has already fucking testified. Before anyone is arrested, they have to go to a judge to rule on whether or not they were indicted. Executive privilege is valid in this case. And that's exactly what happened in Eric Holder's case. And by the way, the federal judge rejected Eric Holder's executive privilege claim, and still he was not arrested. Why? You know why. Because he's black. Oh, um, because he's a leading Democrat. Same thing. Peter Navarro's case, Merrick Garland's DOJ did. Look at this politicized and weaponized like these, like, like they showed up dressed like this at the fucking airport. They were like, I, I doubt they were wearing vests. He was already through security. They even bother to ask a judge. They just arrested Peter Navarro at National Airport. It's weird. It's almost like if he just, he was staying in town and they didn't have a, a reason to believe he was fleeing, they would, all right. So what we're seeing here isn't really about Peter Navarro or Steve Bannon. What we're seeing is a massive escalation in the use by the Democratic Party of our justice system. Dun, dun, dun. For partisan revenge. That's exactly what that was. Peter Navarro wouldn't shut up. Yeah. So they threw him in handcuffs. <laughs> Sorry. Peter Navarro wouldn't shut up, so they threw him in handcuffs? Fucko, some of what he said is what got him in trouble in the first place. He wouldn't shut up on Ari Melber's show. The whole, the, it, they're subpoenaing him to talk to him. And by the way, the, Navarro could absolutely insist on speaking to the January 6th committee in public. I do not want to do this behind closed doors. I want to say my piece. And in fact, at the same moment, Peter Navarro was thrown in jail for asserting executive privilege. He wasn't. He was uh, thrown in jail for um, not uh, showing up or responding to a subpoena where that executive privilege had already been wiped away. A Clinton lawyer called Michael Sussman was acquitted by a jury seated by an Obama appointed judge. Three of the jurors in that case gave money to Hillary Clinton's campaign, and not surprisingly, those same jurors declined to punish Michael Sussman for lying to the FBI to advance the Russia collusion myth that helped Hillary Clinton's campaign. Following it, did it help? Um, also, he didn't. She wasn't running with it. Sussman, they literally know that Sussman went without her permission. He was like, you guys aren't gonna use this politically because it's just so nasty, but all this other shit about the Alpha Bank stuff I, I, have a, I have another client who's talking, I gotta go to the cops. All this? How'd those jurors get on the jury? How'd they do it? I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Durham is a complete fuck up. How about that? How'd they stay there? Um, Durham's a complete fuck up. Now the FBI pretended to be out 
outraged by the fact that Michael Sussman had lied to them, but then we learned actually the FBI was working with Michael Sussman and his law firm, Perkins Coy. Perkins Coy had an FBI workspace in its offices in Washington for a decade. And Michael Sussman, obviously, then, you know, so a decade, uh, which involved, I'm guessing, a bunch of Bush years was so close to the FBI, he had a key card to FBI headquarters. We right, which is why he thought he could speak to the, the director of that particular bureau instead of having to talk to field agents. And they came back and they said, you're going to need to talk to field agents. Then he ended up being interviewed by them. And one of them uh, initially had said that he was working for Hillary Clinton or he hadn't mentioned it or vice versa when he'd never actually asked the question. And he had no contemporaneous notes that he had ever asked the question. And the basis of the entire lawsuit doesn't give a fuck about Russia, nothing to do with Christopher Steele, nothing to do with any of this stuff. The question before the jury was singular did the did he misrepresent who he was working for at specifically either by avoiding and answering lying to the fbi when they asked him that question or by avoiding it entirely he told them he was not there on uh, on the behalf of any particular client and he was never asked if he was sent there uh, by hillary clinton and denied it so it's there's no case there never was one it was a waste of fucking time. The jurors said so. This from a re it was unanimous. You got so you're saying like we got twelve jurors. Three of them are Hillary Clinton uh, donors. So we know they're obviously women. Probably blah. I can't do it. Um, <laughs> so the the rest of them all maggots. All of them had red maga hats on and magoo right across the top. And they agreed. It was the one moment of true bipartisanship. As a matter of fact, they were outnumbered by the non-Hillary Clinton supporters on the jury, and they still wanted the fucker to walk. Magoo. Recently released text exchange. We're quoting. Do you have a badge, or do you need help getting into the building? The FBI's general counsel, James Baker, asked Sussman, and we're quoting now. I have a badge, Sussman replied. Sussman had a badge. Yeah, see that? It's Michael Sussman. I have something time sensitive and sensitive I need to discuss. Do you have any availability for a short meeting tomorrow? I'm coming on my own, not on behalf of a client or company. Wanted to help the bureau. Thanks. Anytime, uh, but lunchtime, you name it. I have a badge. Please remind me of your room number. Fucking and? Badge to the FBI building? How do we get one of those? Oh, we're not leading Democratic lawyers, so we can't have them. So Michael Sussman knew he'd never be punished. Take three steps back. What's going on here? Yeah, obviously there's a two-tiered justice system. It's it's it, it's it's blah and white. The fantastic piece of the Federalist, Ben Weingarten, explained how we should understand these two prosecutions. Quote: They send an unmistakable message. We oh, the Federalist. All right, ben, the the Federalist is sending this nice image. Uh, the Federalist. By the way, the eagle with the three stars. I mean, drawn like that, it's a, it's a little untergarten. You know what I mean? Get you anytime, anywhere, on any grounds we choose. You can't touch even a single. It sends an unmistakable message. We can get you anytime, anywhere, on any grounds we choose. You can't touch even a single one of ours. Hillary Clinton spoke for 11 hours to the Benghazi committee. One of ours. A single one, unless you count uh, our, our. Uh, the first like female running for president that actually had a shot at doing. That's it, right there. This is a partisan play. It's so true. It's just so true. By a Guys, political party true. that has somehow completely taken over our largest law, largest law enforcement agency. Our largest law enforcement agency. Ha whoop. And Andrew Sussman is not Michael Sussman is not even the and, and Michael Sussman is not even Andrew Sussman. Least example of this. Andrew McCabe? Lisa Page? Peter Strzok? All of them lied to the feds as well. That's a crime. None of them were ever. N no, they didn't. Or hauled off in leg irons. In fact, they're now at CNN. Well, they showed up. See, see, the funny thing is, is they all went through due process. When they got subpoenas, they answered them. They all testified in person under oath. They didn't try to avoid doing that. And none of them ended up in leg irons. It's fucking weird that way. It's almost as if they only put the leg irons on you if they think you're going to amscray. MSNBC and Georgetown, respectively. They were rewarded with better jobs for what they did. 
yeah, it's weird. It's almost like if you live up to your, uh, the, you know, the most respectable version of your part in any kind of an argument, even if you're seen to have lost that argument by some people, you'll uh, you'll win later by being at least on the up and up. They always are. Jim Clapper and John Brennan committed perjury on television. On television. Before Congress. There's no dispute about that. What do they do? Oh, they're on TV now, too. Hunter Biden. Sorry, the, the, sorry, the CIA. Um head in an open session didn't tell you what you wanted to hear lied on a federal gun form a gun form oh my gosh well i think there's only one solution we have to tighten the rules and regulations around people telling the truth on gun forms to make them you know put those people in leg irons hey look we can agree on something tucker look at that i think people that you know that bust that break the law should be uh, putting leg irons like Peter Navarro. Whereas you think that uh, it was bad that Hunter Biden could uh, say that he didn't hadn't done drugs or wasn't an addict or was an addicted drug, whatever the frame was on it. And the argument, of course, legally that you have, then you're going to have an ice gate appeal against this in a court of law is whether or not an addict actually believes they're an addict or not. But uh, yeah, so did Brett Kavanaugh. We'll get to that in a moment. He's on the Supreme Court. I'm sure Tucker will get bring that up. But how about this? So let's meet halfway on this whole Hunter Biden thing. Everybody who lies on their gun form about anything goes to jail. What do you think? Minimum five years? That way Hunter's going to be in jail the largely the rest of Biden's presidency, the, the whole eight years. And, uh, and you don't have to worry about it. And then I get, you know, anybody who, you know, doesn't cross their T's properly on a gun form right to the, right, right there, right to jail, right away. Yeah, one year, you'll, you'll do one year. Is that crazy, crazy, insane alien? I, I mean, I think we're six, one, half dozen of another. I got to say, I, why does this, it always wants to do this. It always wants to like restart the page. It's craziness. Mm, there's Sussman, and then the Federalist, and then this business, and then Clapper, and then Hunter. That's where we were. We were at Hunter Biden. Oh, we can't do it because because the, the the computer won't let me because it thinks I'm thieving. Aggravating with aggravation. Where is it? That's it, right there. That's it, right there. Okay, now I got it started again. It's just a weird little quirk so that uh, to keep it, f that you know, it's one of those like, so you're not recording stuff and using the software just to record things. When it's obvious I'm this in the, I'm in the picture. All right. Partisan. All right, blah, 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 blah. Okay, there we go, Hunter Biden, here we go. Or nothing, watch. Why did you have a gun? Well, I did, again, you know, the period of my life that um, was difficult. It was um, scary because you were dealing, you were around drug dealers and you were known to be rich. Can't imagine. Here's, here's the question that most Republicans want to ask is, why doesn't everyone have a gun? Why don't toddlers have guns? Are you going to tell me the people? <laughs> what you're saying is, is that a, uh, a, 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 a gentleman with no criminal record shouldn't have a gun. But, you know, I I don't know. According to the reporting, at one point, the Secret Service went looking for the record of sale. Do you I know anything about that? Nothing, no. But you know about the Secret Service being involved? In no, that? I have no idea. I, I don't know whether the Secret Service were or why, why they would be, or I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I don't know why the Secret Service were involved. Really? You had no idea? Yes, I, I would think it very odd that the Secret Service itself, unless they were there to, you know, the idea is that they were there to cover it up, um, would be looking into this specifically, except as a charge that someone else had made that a crime had been committed. Because they were with you. They helped you. You committed a gun felony. Um, no, misdemeanor. It's all out there. You didn't commit a gun felony. But Hunter Also, by the way, uh, Tucker represents the party that believes that Guns are a perfectly logical replacement for a penis, and everyone should have one at birth. Biden is the president's son, and more importantly, he's a faithful party loyalist. So you know, as well as he does, he doesn't have a thing to worry about. In fact, he can flaunt his crimes. RadarOnline.com just got pictures of Hunter Biden casually waving his illegal firearm around as he cavorted with a prostitute several years ago. The picture... Yeah, I mean, 
I'm going to have to trust you that that's his ass, Tucker. You would know. Throw Hunter Biden's finger on the trigger of the gun, as well as crack cocaine and drug paraphernalia. Hmm. Who's she? A weapon of war in the hands of a drug addict. Is the Justice Department bothered by this? No, of course not. Well, well, yeah. Who, if we were, is the Justice Department supposed to be alerted every time um, evidence that people with a negative past who have since rehabbed themselves um, comes up? Should we? Are we, we going to send up the Ghostbuster uh, bell every time somebody like you know? when there's pictures of this uh, guy committing a crime when he was younger. He's, what's it, well, what's, is he, is he still, no, no, he's fine now. He's family, and what's he doing? He's painting, oh. You know what bothers the Justice Department quite a bit? Defying the Democratic Party. Do that, and your house gets raided by a SWAT team that tips off CNN before it happened. That's not true, that's a lie. Roger Stone discovered that the hard way. No, it was the easy way, it was actually very easy. Because he didn't have to leave his house. He, he discovered it while he was in bed. The hard way would be like, you you hear about it, like somebody calls you and the connection's really shitty and you're trying, like, what? They're what? They're raiding my house? They're what? They're looking at it? Yeah, they're also coming in your windows like, smash. That'd be pretty bad. And then you're still in bed and they land on you. Exclusive footage you're looking at right now from CNN as the FBI arrives at Rogers. Yeah, because Roger Stone lives right next to CNN. Stone's residence in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, oh. taking him into custody. Uh, technically speaking, he was right next to Epstein's house, I think. So there, there's always CNN covered oh, there. Does Hal what? Have chat up? He's uh, He has to get on the road. Yes, I do have to chat up. And I have uh, another 10 minutes. And then I pack up quickly and race out the door. Before dawn there, before 6 a.m. or just after 6 a.m., a dozen officers were told... So that's the actual norm. If you were. Hey, look, it's those door kickers that uh, Don Jr. says are friends of his. Tony Podesta, and you work for the Democratic Party, you're totally fine. Nothing you do is going to get you in trouble, and you know it. Well, I mean, it's funny how all the people you're referencing have all either sent letters or responded through their lawyers to any legal subpoena they get. Even if the people who sent the subpoena don't like the response in the case of Boehner, for example, they don't just leave it like, ah, fuck you, I'm not even talking to you guys. Because that's when this happens. If you're Roger Stone and you've done nothing wrong at all, but you've given the finger to the Democratic Party, they show up at your house with guns. That's the... No, no I mean, lots of people give the finger to the Democratic Party, mostly Democratic voters a lot of times. Um, form the Attorney General is upholding. So Look at them beating him up. Serve the Democratic Party and you will be rewarded, even if you're a felon. Yeah, gone. Look at that. They were gentlemanly. They recognize that the man is, has got a lot of registered firearms and has been at a lot of NRA gatherings, so he's clearly dangerous. They walk him out, they cuff him while they look at his shit and have him sit in a car, and that's that. And almost exactly so he can't destroy evidence exactly the because that's why they were there. The DOJ was putting Peter Navarro in shackles. The DOJ was also... Wait, what? He wasn't in shackles until he was in county or whatever, until the, he was in jail, which is what they do to everybody. You don't get, you don't get like, free... No, I'm a friend of the former presidents. I get to, my legs get to be free. ...the most serious charges against the two left-wing lawyers who tried to incinerate cops, burn them to death in their patrol cars during the BLM riots. Now, this pair had faced 30 years in jail on terrorism charges, but that was too tough for the Biden DOJ. Now, they'll be out in a couple, max. Why? Ma a couple, max. I, because they've got the right politics. And Liz Cheney's not giving you a lecture about it. people who try to burn... I, I know of this story. I don't mind digging into it a little bit, but I'm going to guess that uh, they're, they're like, they got five to seven or something instead of 25. Police officers to death are a threat to our democracy. No, they're fine. We're just going to ignore them. It never happened. Ignore them? What do you mean it never happened? They're currently in jail. It happens all the time. In California, at the height of the BLM riots, a career felon called Tony Walker executed a 19-year-old Berkeley student called Seth Smith, walked up for no reason, never seen him before in his life, and executed him, fired a gun into the back of his head. Why do you do this? Because of his skin color. It was a racially motivated... Huh. 
He probably knows those three people from MSNBC and Eric Holder. I'm seeing... Is anybody else knowing, noticing the fucking trend in this shit? Yeah, I, I, right, Doug. I guarantee those two people were uh, handcuffed and, and shackled when they went to jail. The fuck? Yes, yeah, the fifth black person that he singled out. Motivated attack. F that fucking hell. White M effort, Walker said. No one denies that. He said that. No, and, and because he's friends with Eric Holder and he knows uh, um, a producer from MSNBC, he, he was allowed to walk free. But here's the interesting thing. A guy's just executed on the street because he's got the wrong skin color? Sounds like a hate crime, right? No. Merrick Garland's DOJ did not pr pursue hate crime charges. In fact, a month ago, prosecutors caught an unbelievable deal with Walker. They sentenced him on a single charge of, brace yourself, voluntary manslaughter. F that white M effort, he said, as he executed a college student. That sounds like voluntary manslaughter. Hold on. Uh, this what? Is Hold on. Let's look at the name again. He's going to bring it up. California, at the height of the BLM run, okay. Seth Smith walked up for no reason, executed a 19-year-old... Okay, sorry. One second. Shall we uh, check out the Seth Smith murder? Uh... Killer apologizes to mother of slain teen. Before you know it, I shot Seth. Tony Walker described himself as a washed up nobody who probably deserves uh, deserved to die in prison. 61 year old man convicted of fatally shooting a 19 year old US, UC Berkeley student. He'd spotted on the street, told the teenager's family during a sentencing uh, hearing Monday that he was remorseful, but had no reason for what he had done. You've got so many innocent people out here dying, Tony Walker said. Uh, and here I am, I'm just going to out committing murder on innocent people and it's just not right. I don't care who does it. There's no reason I don't have any reason. I don't have, uh, I don't have no justification. Walker State was part of a surprise plea deal reached in the case earlier this month as a result of an agreement. Walker was convicted of voluntary manslaughter and sentenced to 25 years in state prison. He's 60. He also agreed to make a direct statement to Smith's family to explain what he had done. Beth's, uh, Seth's mother, Michelle Rhode Smith, told Berkeley side the statement felt incomplete, no doubt. I mean, nothing, no statement could ever do it. Uh, was it simply he walked by you randomly and just saw him as prey? I don't know that. What led you outside? Um, Walker's statement was short on details on the night of the killing. On Dwight Way, June 15th, he said he'd only gone outside to clear his head, and before you know it, I shot Seth. I couldn't believe it. Walker continued. He didn't do anything to me. He didn't deserve it. Walker also told the Smiths he was not a violent person. But his criminal record tells a different story. As an adult, Walker racked up 11 felony convictions, including several for robbery, according to court records reviewed by Berkeley Side on Monday. He was sent to prison three times in his early 20s and early 40s. Uh, Walker was on probation, probation for illegal gun possession when he killed Smith. Here you go. Yeah, you could have solved this with uh, tighter gun laws. He, he shouldn't get probation. How about that? How about tighten up probation rules? Let it go to crazy notion that it would be all right the defendant was uh has established an entrenchment no, sorry an entrenched pattern i gotta move this over here uh of criminal conduct that probation prison and parole have unable uh were unable to eradicate a probation officer re wrote in a recent assessment during his 50-year criminal history which began at the age of nine the defendant was amassed eight findings 15 convictions multiple grants of probation multiple prison prison commitments sadly at age 61 the defendant is still not prepared to shed his criminal lifestyle walker had been placed in foster care at nine after being caught stealing and deemed incorrigible he spent many of his formative years in juvenile hall and california youth authority and uh, you know just like uh charles manson walker was born in missouri blah 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 his brother unstable probation officer found no mitigating circumstances to justify a lighter sentence uh was going through a lot the killer says yeah um, Monday, Walker was visibly emotional during a statement at times, choking up or crying. When it was his turn to speak, he paused for 30 seconds and exhaled quickly, blowing a uh, stream of air through his lips. I know whatever I'm going to say ain't going to change anything. I never killed anybody in my life. I never intended to kill Seth. I was going through a lot of deep-seated things in my life. Uh, he then said his parents had passed away. See, what? and again, this is not a BLM-related thing at all. This is a random act of murder. They're questioning whether he's he was sane at the time when he did it which is probably why he got the voluntary manslaughter thing but by pleading to that he got automatically got 25 years and they could just put him away whereas murder in california the standard is higher so you gotta you, you'd have to go through court to do it so they saved everybody a lot of grief 
and bullshit and a 60 year old man is going to die in prison that's what this is doesn't involve the doj has nothing to do with this and again what are they going to do stack it on there what is is he worried that this won't show up um as a hate crime and again i don't see the the statement in there of what he said um The, I mean, maybe there's a witness statement about him saying it. Um, he said he prayed to God every night and he prays to Seth too. I asked him if he can hear me to forgive me for taking his life. He had much more going for himself than I did. Described himself as a washed up nobody. My life is over. Seth had a long life ahead of him, a bright one, a fruitful one. It wasn't right for me to do what I did. In closing, he hoped the family would find a way to forgive him. If you don't, I truly understand. I don't know if I could forgive someone in this situation. As the hearing ended, just before deputy led him out of the courtroom, Walker addressed the family once again. Bye, Mrs. Smith. God bless you guys. Raising his fist in the air in front of his shoulder. Keep strong. There's And there's a, uh, yeah. And his, you know, the mother, she's not willing to forgive him because she can't, I, yeah. Um, and then they talk, and then the rest of the story talks about what happens. That's, and by the way, same uh, is the same photo he's using. Same dude, same story, same everything. Nothing to do with the, and by the way, the whole like Eric Holder refused to do a hate crime thing on it is because somebody emailed them and insisted on doing it. He doesn't even know why he did it. That's what makes it not a hate crime. Even if he called him, even if he addressed what color he was, he, he didn't seem to be uh, at least admitting that he was aware that he had hate towards him because of his skin color. He just addressed it perhaps if that quote is true. And if he felt that way as a hate crime, why would he be apologizing to the family and saying he had a bright future ahead of us? All right, never mind. It's just stupid. Like the whole conversation is just ridiculous. Hold on. Here, do this real quick. Oh, and it does it again. I the the one thing about this software, man, it just it's just weird that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have to reload the page every time. Do that shit. Good evening. Hi. But here's the interesting thing: a guy's just executed on the street because he's got the wrong skin color. Sounds like hate crime, right? No. Well, that's uh, because he. it doesn't seem to be the case from that guy that he killed him just because he was white. He just killed somebody. Merrick Garland's... He sounds like a crazed person who's a murderer who's losing his mind. Jay did not pr pursue hate crime charges. In fact, a month ago, prosecutors caught an unbelievable deal with Walker. They caught a deal? Cut a deal. He sentenced him on a single charge of, brace yourself, voluntary manslaughter right and he's he got an automatic 25 years with no chance of parole and he's gonna he's 61. f that white m effort he said as he executed a college student again i don't know where that came from we'll, but we'll trust that was part of the the, the testimony at some it sounds point. like voluntary manslaughter this is a day or that he said it afterwards trend and not just because people are dying Nothing destroys the legitimacy of our institutions more than politicized law enforcement. You can't have that. Dude got 25 years and he's 61. He's not going anywhere. Justice must be blind. If there is a single- It wasn't first degree murder because he didn't plan it. It wasn't second degree murder because it was uh, a, like a crime of passion. He voluntarily mo killed someone without reason. Institution we have to preserve for the sake of our children and grandchildren. It's our justice system and the law enforcement agencies that serve it. They can't be corrupt. If they're corrupt, it's going to be pretty hard to live here. Liz Cheney. You should probably move then. I, I mean, has anybody got any recommendations of where, uh, where Hunter should, I mean, where Hunter, where uh, Tucker should move? Anybody? Any got any ideas? Any, any thoughts? Any rags, any bones, any rags today? And Nancy Pelosi and the rest of the lunatics on the January 6th committee. Finally, he's upset with a white person. <laughs> have done far more damage to this democracy. Hungary, yeah, well. See, than the rioters ever did. Far more. And now they're trying to make it worse. What are you talking about? That guy got 25 years. He's going he's gonna to die in jail. The t other two people you're talking about 
avoided arrest, were arrested, and then were charged and are in jail. And he's like, you're going to a couple of years, couple, what do you mean? Six, 10, seven, whatever. And then, and what they weren't successful. They didn't actually do it. Meanwhile, Navarro just avoided a subpoena. Was, was shackled, taken there and said, address this. Okay, I'll be there. All right, now you can go. Axios is reporting that some members of the committee, quote, want big changes on voting rights and even to abolish the electoral college. Uh huh. Abolishing the electoral college. Oh my God. Y y you mean one person, one vote, and that our democracy would be based on the will of the actual people and not allowing uh, allowing giant sections of land to have votes? And if you're against that, of course, you're undermining democracy. Was it a conspiracy? I think certainly. I mean, look, if you, you look at the court filings, um, you well, do look you believe at, it, it was a conspiracy? I do. It is extremely broad. It's extremely well organized. It's um, really chilling. Oh, it's really chilling. What's really chilling is when the committee gets to. You know what the really chilling part is? Is when you're at Starbucks and there's like three black. They're behind the counter. There's like two black. And there's a. Behind you in line, there's a black. There's a black. There's a black. The black person. Uh. Arrest people not because they violated meaningful laws or no, meaningful laws. Pose a threat to the United States. I see that. Which which laws are meaningful? But because their politics are unacceptable. Well, if your politics involve beating the police on the steps of the Capitol in an attempt to overturn the election, you don't actually have American politics any fucking ways. Because they have given the finger to people like Liz Cheney. Is Liz Cheney okay with that? The upholder of democracy? We texted Liz Cheney on Friday and said, are you okay with, that, with this? They just arrested a 72-year-old man who did nothing wrong? And, and she was like... <laughs> Anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, um, did nothing wrong other than uh, avoid a subpoena, not show up, not respond, and and then try to get on a plane. Doesn't that cross some kind of line? Are you gonna stand up and say something about it? Yeah, what are you doing? Have you seen, they're letting blah. They're letting a guy who's a blah. He shot a white and he's gonna go to jail for only 25 years. He's 61. I'm. Do you know how scary? It's Jesus Christ. 86 year old black guy gets out of jail with a chip on his shoulder. You don't think he's coming straight to my door? I'm Tucker Carlson. She didn't respond. Really? I would have. That's what the middle finger emoji is for. The January 6th committee has just hired a former producer of Good Morning America called James Goldston. He'll be overseeing the committee's prime time here. Oh, there we go. Uh, five blacks and a Jew. It's on Thursday night. So the show trial now. I'm glad, I'm glad we're, we're threading the needle, needle really finely right now. Has a production crew. And of course, we'll be covering that in great detail on Thursday. By arresting Peter Navarro, they're hoping to shut up one of the- Well, the network's not gonna be covered. He's, he'll, in great detail, he's gonna do like three minute segments on it. At, you know, where they show like this much video of what happened out of context, and then he'll, you know, go on a screed about how this is the end of our democracy, and we live in a third world country, and this is, you know, this is basically like, it's, it's like the, the Congress is turning into Haiti, and uh, <laughs> which is the single worst thing that could happen to uh, any neighborhood that uh, Tucker Carlson spends any major time on. Um, with local critics before it begins. Subscribe to the Fox. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I do like. He's, he's yelling right over my shoulder. His YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens story. He's so pissed he has to make that. He's like, Sean did it. Now I have to do it. This is friggin' bullshit. All right, I got to go. I'm uh, I'm out of time. I got like, ah, uh, that one ate up most of our time. And I had another, uh, this one's hilarious. This is the title of this one. Glenn's solar panel nightmare could be Biden's future for America. I want to pick that one up tomorrow, if you guys don't mind. I would like to do that one because it's just... Just anytime, anytime where Glenn Beck's personal problems are the reason the rest of us um, are, you know, should be afraid for our future um, because of, you know, dear God, do you realize that I, you know, Glenn Beck's trip to Walmart should be a warning to us all. Glenn um, Beck, that, hold on, um, you know, 
fear is all we know. Uh, by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you're on Twitch. If you've got uh, Amazon Prime, you can subscribe on Twitch and it doesn't cost you a dime. You can also just follow. If you're just watching the show regularly and you're stumbling across this, follow for a little while. Subscribe on YouTube while you're trying it out. Stick your toe in the water. See if it'll be all right. Now I got to go sound check uh, for Nerd Halen and do a show tonight. And I adore you guys. And uh, if I can, I'll set up my camera and we'll we'll uh, live stream the the sound check. If it's not, there, we'll we'll see. Um, I don't know what their rules are. Anyways, uh, and I don't want to make any promises I can't keep because they won't let me. Yeah, so we'll break a nerd definitely. Um, uh, until then, uh, let me say. Hold on, I got to get my screen together. Um, take care of yourselves and take care of somebody else, and um, give a thumbs up on your way out the door. It doesn't hurt. It's all right. Uh, thank you for any super chats I missed today because I was running around. Oh, and I got to check and see if there's a raid to be had. Um, Airborne, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna raid uh, um, the major right now as as I'm going out the door, and it's good because I got a split, so he'll, you'll get a little extra time with the major today if you're on Twitch. So um, three, it's getting ready. Here it comes. All right, uh, take care, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Okay, bye. Hold on, I just said goodbye to the Twitch people because then they just got all dumped over there. But the rest of you, just between us. I love you guys. I want you to know that, and I will see you later.